Alright, so this is just going to be a video on the Mars Hydro LED grow lights. Uh, I've got a couple different models here, so I'm just going to go over some of the differences, um, some experience that I have, and uh, probably some tips. Uh, first thing is, <clears throat> you can see here on the left, we do have the um, the bigger one, which is a, it's labeled as the Mars 2 1200 watt. It's not actually 1200 watts of power draw, it's about usually about half. Most of the LEDs are advertised that way because they're, they're efficient. Um, you obviously want to have as much water as you can for your plants when they're growing to make it brighter, um, to cover more area and stuff. And, uh, and usually with LEDs, that's one of the big things that no one's been able to do yet is to uh, basically get a comparable footprint co for coverage uh, to an HPS light. Um, this one on the, the 1200 watt is definitely the closest to an HPS that I've seen. It covers a huge area uh, it's easily covers a four by four it's pretty good um and then the one on the right here is a mars hydro 300 it's a good beginner light um i flowered plants under that like individual plants it works it does great they're pretty close to the same type of light um the bigger light does make a difference with obviously it puts out more physical light but it also I think has a wider footprint for its size um, the smaller one doesn't quite have as large of a footprint um, you know even when you translate it to, from light to light um, you can also see that the bigger light here is actually a lot thicker the other one's a lot thinner uh, that kind of makes sense now on the Mars 2 300 watt ones they only have one fan in the back the old models would have, uh, I believe it was two or three. And then on the back of this one, we actually have four. Um, I was using the smaller ones and, and I had multiple smaller ones I was using uh, at one point and you know, they're pretty hefty light. When I got this and this, the 1200 watt is substantially heavier. It's a heavy light. If you have a very small tent or something that doesn't hold a lot of weight, you're gonna have to have reinforcement because this light is heavy. Um, the smaller one also does not have any kind of switches or dimmable functions or anything like that. It's just pretty much you plug it in. When the timer kicks on for your outlets or whatever you're using, it'll turn on, unplug it, or cut the power to it, and it turns off. That's it. The bigger unit does have uh, off switches. It's got a, a growth or veg um, mode as well as a bloom mode. Now, I've seen some reviews on this that say... You know, you pretty much have to have them both on because if you have just flour on or whatnot, the fans don't work. But since I've had this, they actually um, will work. The fans work for either one. You can put just one on or both on. So your growth, I'll go, I'm going to have a video of some of the lighting itself, but basically the growth veg type unit is more blue, which is good for vegetative growth. And the bloom adds a lot more red. Um, there is some still some red with the growth function, but it has a lot more when you turn the bloom on and if you turn the veg off and just a bloom it's mostly just like a red it almost looks like a reptile type light like an infrared type light and it's um, not infrared but you know it's got that heat look to it um, but it's not it doesn't put out as much as I like so when I do use this to flower which I'll have a video up I will be using both modes on at the same time for flowering I'm not going to be really vegging under this light but if I was I would just use just uh, uh, the veg mode Okay, another uh, function you see on here is the big one has the daisy chain function. Uh, I don't really recommend it. I mean, the lights are not cheap. I don't really want to risk uh, blowing them out. Um, but it is a function that Mars Hydro does offer on the bigger units. Some of the older small units also have it, but the newer ones do not, such as the one with the one fan. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. The mounting bracket is, just, you know, your typical, you know, uh, four chain to a, to a carabiner. Uh, these are pretty, I was actually surprised how heavy duty they are. They're a lot bigger, obviously, on the bigger light. And the smaller light has smaller ones, but um, they're both pretty well made. Uh, besides the weight, there's not a huge difference for visually. You know, one's white, one's like a kind of like a gunmetal color. Um, one has a hammer texture, the other one's smooth, which personally I kind of wish they were all white just to be more uniform, but that's just me. Um, they both have the same thickness gauge typical computer type cable for your power um and that's pretty much it i mean it's a typical light I and mean, everyone covers what they are in other videos that's not really what i want to do i kind of want to show you the light on 
um, and also some, some differences between the two as well as some benefits um, and tricks. So I'm going to set these up and uh, we'll sh show you some of the coverage. Is that um, the bigger light does hang directly lower than the smaller ones. It has bigger, like longer uh, hanging chain type material. Um, so I mean that may be also a concern if you have a smaller tent, but uh, there's different ways to rig these up so you can bring them right to the top anyway. So to me that's not really too big of an issue, but it is something to note. All right, so we're gonna go ahead in here and uh, we're gonna turn on the veg mode for the uh, 1200 first, so you can guys see the coverage here. This is uh, it's about four feet off the ground. So we turn on. As you can tell, um, probably going from the brick over there to that pole, it's it's about eight eight and a half feet. It's a good length. Um, the coverage on here covers the 4x4 four four, um, pretty heavily, and then you've got like your outside lighter uh, concentrated uh, light. But it, it definitely covers at least a 4x4 four four area strongly from 4 feet up. I mean, granted, most people want to keep these a little bit closer or a little bit further. It's kind of a weird height, um, but it does cover um, that much ground. Now, if we turn that off... We can turn on just the flower. That's the flower only. You can tell. Uh, hopefully, it shows up on camera well. That it is. It's just definitely a lot more red to it. Um, again, same same coverage, four by four, but it's not quite as intense. It's it's definitely a strong light. Uh, the fans up top kicking. You can hear them with one on, not both. But just the growth on. And that has fans working as well. So put them both on, all four fans go. And you can tell that for flowering will give you a 4x4 four four coverage pretty well. Uh, anybody that wants to doubt that, I'll do another video with uh, measurements and tape measure and stuff. But it, it definitely gives you pretty solid coverage. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that off. These other two lights I've got spaced off on the outside, the other side of the lights. Um, and those are the 300 watts, so they're a lot smaller. But we're going to um, plug basically one in, and then I'll do both to show you um, some different tricks. Basically, is with any of these lights, even this big one, I almost want to say you never want one light. You always want two. The cross lighting that you get covers shadows up better. It covers around plants better. If you have one strong light underneath the light, underneath the plant, underneath certain leaves, certain stems, you're always going to get a shadow. Or, you know, it might wrap around a little bit, but you're always going to get some kind of a shadow. Versus if you have, say, you can't afford a 1200, if you get two 600s, two 600s are going to give you better coverage than one 1200. It just, it covers around things. You, basically, the light overlaps. It, it just works better that way. So if you, if you can only afford one light, I suggest breaking it in half and getting multiple. But we'll show that here in the next video. All right, what we show here is the two 300 um, side lights on. It gives you a a bigger coverage. I mean, you look, um, you know, the two lights combined is going, you know, eight, eight and a half feet wide by, you know, maybe four and a half feet um, deep from the light pattern because the way they're, they're not square lights, they're rectangular. So you are going to get more uh, coverage depending on how you position them in, in a direction. But you can tell they do do a fairly decent amount of coverage um they're definitely not as intense if you get the bigger lights it definitely pushes farther from a distance um you're gonna get better canopy penetration that way so aluminums matter in the sense that um you know if you're lollipopping and you you know have a lighter light you need to lollipop more or you can do less if you have a stronger light so there's different techniques for that but also you know we'll put on the other light as well so just the growth light you can just tell immediately how much more powerful that is. You know, it gives you a good coverage. You can see here if I tip this, you know, light will travel. But it just doesn't compete with the bigger light, even just on veg mode. And then again, we put it on flower mode, and it gives you even more coverage. And I also apologize for the dirty basement. Um, right now we're putting up the room, a, a new room essentially and stuff, so it's kind of a mess down here. But, uh, you know, you could tell with just these three lights, um, you know, that's going to give you a solid, you know, 
a solid coverage for a pretty good size area. You could easily cover an 8x4 tent with that. Um, personally, I like the powerful lights, so I would probably do just two 1200s and separate them. Maybe a little bit of uh, smaller lights in between or something around corners, but I mean, the, the big light covers quite a bit of area. Um, I'm personally going to be running uh, this next round a 6.5x6.5 six tent, um, six feet up, or six and a half feet up. It's just a square. Uh, we're going to be running two of these 1200s and also four of the 300s in this tent uh, to try to get maximum LED basically yield from everything. So that's the number one issue when you're doing with these LEDs. These Mars Hydro or other type companies that are pretty generic, they do work. Mars Hydro, I noticed they do um, industrialize it a little more, so they're pretty consistent with their making and stuff. You don't get like a, a lot of cheap burnt units, but um, it's it works. You can, you can flower, you can veg with them, you can do everything. It's just a matter of keeping the light at the right height and also um, making sure that your footprint is covered because that's the biggest thing. LEDs are typically don't have that footprint, um, so you need either multiple of them, especially I was saying by using multiple lights together, you get a full coverage. It's going to give you solid you know, canopy coverage, but you need more than one. There's no one light do all kind of thing. Not yet anyway. Um these are all supposed to be 90 degree LEDs in the small units. In the bigger unit, it does say 120 degree as well as 90 degree. So that also could probably affect why it shoots out a better better coverage from the from the distance. But um, these lights definitely work. And even with three of them running, you can hear it's not really that loud. Um, you can definitely feel the cool air. It's cool air coming out. It sucks air from the top onto the heat sinks and then out the sides. And you can feel it. The air coming out is not hot. It's cool. You know, leave these things on for a while. In fact, I feel like the bigger one runs cooler. These smaller ones are a little bit warmer, but, you know, especially just to have as good ventilation. Um, but these work. So, you know, don't be afraid to get some LEDs and, and get into the new the new swing of things. I mean, HPS, uh, when you break it down, it's always going to produce more lumens. It's going to give you a better coverage than any single LED. Uh, or basically any other single type of light right now. They don't have anything that's comparable for footprint coverage. There really isn't. But um, if you break it down efficiency-wise and say, okay, well, the HPS puts out how many aluminums, you're getting so much grams per watt, blah, blah, blah. Once you do all the math out, you end up getting probably about 8% of the light that the HPS is putting out is what is usable by the plant. So as far as spectrum goes and stuff, and that does make a difference. Um, when you do these <clears throat> LED lights, obviously they're designed specifically for those spectrums, you're getting 100% output. So if, if you say, you know, I've got an, uh, an HPS light that puts out three times as much light, well, it's only getting 10% to the plants of, uh, of an LED versus LEDs getting 100%. So you got to do your math out. You know, how many LEDs do you need in your footprint to give, the first thing you need to worry about is coverage. I need so many LEDs to cover my my floor. And then from there, you say, okay, well, canopy is going to be here. You break it down to that. After you have that done, then you break up the wattage, how strong of a light do I need, and whatnot. But, you know, as long as you get your floor coverage covered, it's usually pretty good. I mean, the, the lights do produce really well. I mean, you can see here, tilting it. I mean, it'll light up the whole room. So it's it's definitely nice. Uh, and so far that I've used them, I've been really happy. I plan on getting another 1,200 and, uh, like I said, using two of them for this next grow. So I'll get, keep you guys posted.